In section 3.4, we learned about Q1 and Q3, the first quartile and the third quartile. And together with the median, the minimum, and the maximum, these numbers form the five number summary. There are five numbers that really give you a very concise summary of the distribution of a data set. They tell you the center, which would be the median. They tell you the spread, which is the IQR, and the range, right, the minimum to the maximum. The only thing you don't quite get from it is the shape, which of course um, will be coming soon in a different kind of graph, and we'll see that in a minute. Now the TI-84 calculator can calculate these values with the one variable stats, right? So when we go to stat, edit, there's all the data points, and then I go to stat, calculate number one, go down to calculate, enter, and at the very, very bottom, when you press down with the down arrow, the last numbers are the five number summary. There's the min, Q1, the median, Q3, and the max, right there. They form the five number summary. So let me type all of them in, and there we have it. All right. And then let me just review for you real quick. The range is the max minus the min. So that's 93 minus 54. All right, so I've got those typed in. And then I have here a quick review of some things we've already learned how to calculate early in the chapter. So we have the range, which is the max minus the min. That's 93 minus 54, which is 39. Then the IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1. That's 88.5, take away 76. Then we have the fences which is Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, that's the lower fence, LF. Okay. Then the upper fence, which is UF, is Q3 plus 1.5 IQR, which is 88.5 plus 1.5 times 12.5. And again, I know all of this is review, but this is the kind of thing that you could be asked to do on an exam, for example, one data set and being asked a broad of questions, a variety of questions on the same data set. Are there any outliers? Yes, indeed, because if you have anything lower than the lower fence or higher than the upper fence, it's an outlier, which means 54 and 56 are both outliers. All right, so now we want to try to get to that picture. So we've kind of reviewed the five number summary and everything it's showing us. So we want to look at a graphical display of that five number summary so we can kind of get an idea of the shape because we figured out the center and the spread. Right, the center is the median right here, and the spread is your variety of either one of these things. The IQR is the better measure right there. But let's see it visually. So we're going to create a box plot. So a box plot is a graph of the five number summary. You have um, the center, which is the center line of the box. You have a sp the spread, which is Q3 to Q1, which is the length of the box. Then you have your range, which is the length of the entire graph, including whiskers and stars. And then stars are for outliers. And then um, the outliers are denoted with symbols. They're most often stars, but not always. So here you have a box plot of our exam data. So you can see in the middle, you have your box. You have a box that goes from Q1, which is the lower edge of the box, all the way up to Q3, which is the upper edge of the box. And then there's a line in the middle, and that's the median. So here's the median at 84. Here's the Q3 at 88.5. And here's Q1 at 76 over on the left. So these three numbers are represented by that box. Then you have your maximum over here at 93. And you have your minimum over here at this little dot thing, and that's 54. Now notice 54 and 56 are right there because they're outliers. And then what you do is you make the whisker go to anything that's above your lower fence. right? If so, these two are outliers, so they're out. So then you go to the next score that's above your lower fence. Our lower fence was at 57. So I go back to the data set, and I look for the next number, and it's 60. So the fence has to go to 60. Or excuse me, the whisker has to go to 60. So I'm going to label the five numbers on that box plot. So hold that thought one second. Let me write in those numbers. There we go. So I've labeled all the parts of the box plot so you can see them. So there's the 54, which is technically the min. And I actually did a little bit more because I said just to label the five number summary, but I'm actually labeling a little bit more so you can see what's going on here. There's 56, which is the other outlier. And 57.5 is somewhere in here, and that's the fence. But you don't have the whisker go down to the fence. You have the whisker go to the number that's above the fence, which is 60. There's 76, which is Q1, 84, which is the median, 88.5, which is Q3, and 93 is the max. Now remember that 
every single section of these pieces is broken up by these three quartiles. 76 is the first quartile, which means 25% is below. So the whisker and the two outliers together makes 25%. Then this first left-hand section of the box is also 25% because that's between Q1 and Q2, the median. So there's another 25%. Then the right hand of the box is another 25% because that's the Q3 right here. And between Q3 and Q2 should be 25 excuse me, 25% of the data. And then the last but not least, the, the whisker over here has 25% of the data as well. All right, so what proportion of the scores lie between 78 and 89? 78 and 89. And that is a typo, and I'm going to have to fix it. This is 76. This is 88.5. I don't know what I was doing when I did this. All right, and then this must be 84. All right, let me go fix that for the notes for future. Hold on one second. Oops, and that one's got to change to a 76, too. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's look. 76 and 88. That's the whole box. Well, this is Q1 over here, and this is Q3 over here, so that should be 50%, right? 50% of the data lies in the IQR. That's the whole point about the IQR, so 50% of the data is in that box. Then 76 to 84, well, that's half of that, so that should be 25%, because that's between Q1 and the Q2, the median, okay? So then what about between 88.5 and 93? Well, that's the whisker over here. And again, that should be 25%. Every section of the graph you see is worth 25. This left whisker, including the two dots, 25. This left box, 25. This right box, 25. And the whisker, 25. And then 54 to 76, that's also 25%. To what number does the left whisker, left whisker, I can't say that fast, extend? That would be 60. And that's because 60 is the um, data point that is closest to and above the lower fence, right? So it's above the lower fence, so it doesn't count as an outlier. The 54 and 56 were outliers. They're below the lower fence. But... 60 was the next point in the data set right here that was above that fence. The fence was right here, 57. So you can't go to 57 because there's no data point at 57. You go to the next one that's closest to that fence, but still over it. Almost the reverse of the price is right rules, right? You want to be closest to the fence and over it for the lower fence. For the upper fence, you want price is right rules. You want to be close to the fence, but under it. Right, next, just so you know that for box plots can be drawn kind of in a variety of ways. So this is the exact same box plot as drawn above, but it's drawn vertically instead of horizontally. That's fine, right? You can still see the outliers right here at 54 and 56. They're 60 right there and so on. And then um, different programs can draw them slightly differently, and they'll, they might use slightly different ways of doing it. For example, StatCrunch, which is another program that we use, calculates quartiles differently, and so that means it finds the whiskers differently and the, uh, the fences and the outliers. So according to StatCrunch, 60 was an outlier as well, which it wasn't that way according to Minitab and the calculator. So that's okay, just whatever picture is given to you, go with it, right, and work with it. So in this case, 60 was an outlier, in our case, 60 wasn't, and that's just a difference in how the computer programs treat them. Now, the other thing that you can figure out about box plots, which is the important part, is the shape. So if you remember, the five number summary tells us the center and the spread, right? So center and spread, it gives us IQR and range, which are both kind of measures of spread but it doesn't really tell us the shape. But the box plot totally tells you the shape. Look at this, this is skewed left. You can tell it's skewed left because it has this really long whisker over here on the left and the box is bigger on the left, skewed left. So the box plot gives you the shape and the five number summary gives you the center and the spread. Of course, you can also see the center and spread from the box plot as well because the center is the median, which is 84. Yes, that's truly the center of the data, right? And it's not the center of the graph, but that's because it's skewed left. And then 76 and 88.5, that distance there gives you the spread, that box, right? How wide that box is is kind of how spread apart 50% of your data are. All right, so skewed left is one we were just looking at. So if it has a left 
hand whisker that's larger or a left hand box that's larger. That means it's skewed left. Skewed right would mean that the whisker on the right is larger or the box on the right is larger, right? Ish. And then symmetric is when they're basically the same. Now this one has the box on the right being a little bit bigger, but not by much. It's roughly symmetric. The whiskers in the end, for the most part, usually trump the box. So if the whiskers are pretty even and the box looks even-ish, go with it, right? This is symmetric. Whereas up here, the box was pretty even, but the whiskers were not even at all. Remember that the whisker is where the tail's gonna go because that's where your outliers are gonna be. Um, we do not know, by the way, even if it's symmetric, we don't know if it's bell-shaped or uniform or some other symmetric shape. There are actually a lot of symmetric shapes. They're not all that normal curve that we like so much. But we do know that it's roughly symmetric. All right, so let's look at the following box plot of, of the exam scores for a sample of students from winter 2014. So... Here we have the exam one, exam two, exam three, and the final for a sample of students from winter 2014. So which class, or excuse me, which exam had the lowest average? Well, the average, remember, is the median, so you want to look at the lines in there. So the lowest average was actually the final exam. It looks like it's about 78. Let me type that up. And you'll notice I'm using the scale here. There's four tick marks in there between 70 and 80. So that's got to be 72, 74, 76, 78, and then 80. All right, now which exam had the lowest score, period? Which, which exam had somebody doing the absolute lowest on it? Well, that would be exam one. It's a little close call because the whisker over here on final is pretty close to that. But the whisker looks like it goes to about um, 36 or so, just a little bit above it, like 36 and a half. And then in this guy right here, this exam one, that's 36. So that would be exam one with a score of 36. Oops. Though the final exam has a low of about 36.5, so very close. Right? But the exam one wins. It's a little bit further left. All right, which exam had the largest overall range? All right, the range is the distance between the lowest and the highest. That is definitely exam one, look at it, because the highest is way over here at 98.5, and the lowest is at 36. So that's the spread between the lowest value and the highest value. So let me type that up. There we go. The max was about 97 and a half or so, and the min was 36. 97 and a half take away 36 is 61.5, quite a spread. The final exam is pretty big too, but the, the high on the final was only 94, so that's not quite a spread out. All right, which exam had the largest spread in terms of IQR? So instead of the largest range, the largest IQR. Well, that's going to be either exam two or the final. So you got to kind of look here and say 90 take away 64 or 84 take away 57 and a half. Let me find those calculations. So let me grab the calculator. 90 take away 64 or so for exam two is 26. And then 84, it looks like, take away about 57.5. That's 26 and a half. So the final exam is just a little bit bigger in terms of spread. So let me write that up. There we go. So the final exam has just a little bit bigger box. And remember, that's what this is. This is the width of the box, which is your IQR. And it's just a little bit bigger than the 90 minus 64, which is 26 for exam two. And while I'm on the subject, this range here is the distance from tip to tip. And the final exam is the width of the box. All right, then what's the shape of each of these distributions? Well, every one of them is skewed left. They all have left tails that are longer and left hand boxes that are long. The left hand half of the box is larger, which makes sense. Most students score okay, but you always have a few that are down there at the low end that kind of pull the distribution downward. And that's what I wrote right there.